All right, ladies and gentlemen, continuing our coverage of the uh, horrific terrorist attack in uh, France earlier today, we welcome in Alan Keyes, a uh, prominent player in the Reagan administration, uh, Assistant Secretary of State, UN Ambassador, and three-time uh, Republican presidential uh, candidate. Dr. Keyes, uh, an honor and a pleasure to speak to you again, sir. Glad to be with you. All right, thank you. All right, so um, let me ask you first and foremost, uh, your, your analysis of what took place uh, today and... Uh, Boy, it certainly looked well organized, and, and these people certainly looked like they were military professionals. Well, sadly, I think it's a confirmation of uh, what I think has been true for several years now, that uh, prematurely uh, and without regard for reality, the people in the Obama administration declared that there was no more terror war. Uh, and they have followed through on this by taking steps that I think have given aid and comfort to our terrorist enemies. Uh, trying to pursue some kind of political and ideological agenda at the expense of the security of this country. Uh, and I think we are now seeing the fact that this has emboldened the terrorist infrastructure throughout the world uh, and that they no longer feel uh, that there's going to be any kind of serious damage done to them. Uh, and in fact, as we see in various ways in the relationship with al-Qaeda, the questions that have been raised about uh, whether we've been supporting al-Qaeda terrorists, the closing of Guantanamo, I mean, in every respect, I think we have sent the signal uh, that we who are supposed to be the leaders and backbone uh, of those uh, elements in the world that are in favor of uh, suppressing this violence and that are determined to do so, uh, that we have backed away. Uh, from that task. And I think that uh, it's not only us, but people throughout the world who pay the price uh, for that damaged American leadership. I, I want to I take you back to your old stomping grounds uh, to the United Nations. Uh, no, this is uh, October, not October, but uh, 2012. Uh, Barack Obama speaking before the United Nations, uh, and he said this. The future must not belong to those who slander the prophet of Islam, but to be credible, those who condemn that slander must also condemn the hate we see in the images of Jesus Christ that are desecrated, or churches that are destroyed, or the Holocaust that is denied. If I may, Mr. Ambassador, the problem with that, one of the problems with that as I see it, is that the people who condemn uh, the uh, so-called slandering of the prophet uh, of, of Islam don't just condemn it the way the uh, Christians and, and Jews might condemn the latter uh, examples he gave. Uh, a lot of them do, uh, or, or let, let's put it this way, some do what we saw today, and a lot of them support it. Well, there are two things to, to be clear about, I think. First, I don't care what words this man says, uh, words put into his mouth by speechwriters or even words that come to his mind in order to try to gull people in America and throughout the world. Uh, the test of somebody in a position uh, such as the presidency is how effectively you follow through on those words. And in every respect, we have seen in this uh, administration the reluctance, in fact, to do what's necessary to maintain our strength, to prepare our forces to be ready to cooperate with others around the world, to respond decisively to terrorist attacks and to, the, to uh, take uh, uh, steps that will destroy the terrorist infrastructure. Instead, he's had policies that have sought to aid, abet, comfort, cooperate with, placate, and otherwise appease these terrorist elements. And I think that they have gotten the message. There is no fear in them anymore uh, that the forces of righteous decency throughout the world uh, are going to be united behind strong leadership in responding to their atrocities. All right, uh, before I let you go, uh, uh, Mr. Ambassador, um, the the landscape for 2016, uh, Mike Huckabee quit his TV show. First of all, you have any interest in, uh, in seeking that nomination again? I'm not a Republican. Uh, I have no interest anymore. And what was confirmed for me, and I think many millions of others who are true and authentic conservatives, is that it's time that we understood. There's a one-faction system in this country. Phyllis Schlafly said we're a two-party country. Well, right now, both parties are dominated by an elitist faction determined to overthrow constitutional government and put control and decisive power in the hands of an elitist few. At the grassroots, if we want to maintain the true constitutional system and get the representation that the Republicans and the Democrats both refuse, 
to provide to, to Americans on a whole range of issues. We're going to have to do what people have done in the past. We're going to have to have a realignment, and we're going to have to build an alternative to these corrupt, self-serving parties. All right, Doctor, I hope you'll come back soon. Thank you very much, sir. Glad to do it. Thank Dr. you. Dr. Alan Keyes, thank you. Uh, Dr. Alan Keyes, ladies and gentlemen. When we come back, syndicated political cartoonist Ted Rawl, who knew one of the slain cartoonists. Don't go away.